Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this episode of the OnTrack Whiteboard Series. Uh, my name is David Morakshi, Senior Technical Marketing Engineer with Altium. And today, we'd like to discuss the important subjects of DFA, uh, Design for Assembly. So why is it important to design PCBs with assembly in mind? Well, just to give you a quick overview of what PCB assembly entails, uh, you're done designing your PCB, whether it's a high-density interconnect, uh, high-speed, flex, whatever it is. It's been approved, released, and then sent to fabrication. Uh, great. Uh, once that is all done, you now have barely a bare board. And remember those nice uh, 3D models that you had in your ADA? Well, they now need to be assembled into these bare boards. The problem that often emerges with some designers uh, is that their initial PCB design doesn't fully take assembly into account, but instead they solely focus on the PCB itself without a broader context of other important things, uh, such as uh, how I'm going to do my assembly process, automated or manual, uh, what kind of type component I'm going to use, uh, surface mount, through hole, or both, what kind of processing technology I'm going to use in terms of soldering, uh, components that might emit a large amount of heat, what I'm going to do with them, and, uh, for example, large components, how I'm going to place them on my board, and so on. So that's a quick overview of what we we'll discuss today in this video, as uh, we'll go over these three main highlights, uh, automatic versus manual assembly, uh, the type of components, and placements of those components and best practices. So automation or manual assembly. Uh, I don't think two will disagree that for most high volume production, automation is a must. Uh, but sometimes you only have the option to manually assemble your board. Uh, I personally worked at a research company that we only assemble our board uh, manually. And the reason being we had a very low volume and uh, essentially every product we had was a prototype. Um, so, uh, so what are the, the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, automation? So let's start with the advantages as we have here. Uh, it's definitely fast, uh, no doubt about it because uh, of course, the process is automated and uh, anything that can shorten your production cycle so you can meet your project deadline is always welcomed. Uh, the automated process is very consistent and accurate as machinery preserves the likeness of every unit that is produced, uh, something that is very di uh, difficult to achieve with the, with the hand soldering or manually, uh, especially when it comes to miniature uh, boards for uh, miniature components, for example. Uh, it's reliable, and frankly, it's hard to imagine a high-quality product without automation, knowing that advanced assembly achieved ISO 9001 uh, a long time ago, uh, which makes the use of sophisticated technologies such as uh, BGA X-rays, uh, flying probes, uh, and automated uh, optical vision inspection, for example. Uh, it definitely decreases your overall uh, cost, given that you have the high volume to justify the automated process. And just things uh, to keep in mind, uh, on the other hand, uh, automated uh, process is not cost effective for low volume, as we mentioned earlier, when you consider uh, the setup and time uh, and the cost that is required to do so. Uh, it might not be suitable uh, for boards that require additional final work or other installation post-automation assembly process. Uh, definitely the issue with the oxides and tin, it's very hard to remove them from leads uh, if your application requires you to do so. And uh, no control over your placement, as we can see in this image. Uh, the, the disadvantage here is you don't have control over where, for example, as we can see here, R15, uh, if, uh, if, if it, it fell on the other side, on the top side, as you can see here, it could cover the reference designator. So you don't have as much control uh, with the automated process. And uh, for further details and more about this point, you can refer to the IPC 7351 titled General Requirement for the Design of Contact Pads and Printed Circuit Boards Using Surface Mount Technology. Now let's move to components. Um, with components, you have pretty much three types that you need to keep in mind. Uh, through hole components, uh, surface mounts, and non-standard, and the ones that have kind of odd shapes. An example will be an optical fiber ca cable. Uh, so let's go through these images so we can uh, show you the recommended 
and the possible scenarios where you might have uh, only one type of technology or mixed. So we can see here, uh, the one that is labeled A is an example of a throw hole component. And here, the one labeled B is an example of a PCB with surface mount components only. And the one labeled C is an example of a board with mixed technologies, both through hole and surface mount. And all of these boards, as you can see, have one uh, thing in common, that all the components have been installed on one side of the board. And here we have what we're referring to as type 2, with components installed on both sides of the PCB. As you can see, the image is not showing. We don't have an image, for example, uh, the one labeled A, uh, simply because uh, we never recommend a two-sided through hole uh, board. Uh, it's just never recommended. And uh, the next one, labeled B, is a PCB with surface mount on both sides of the board. C here uh, has both throw hole and surface mount with the throw hole components on top and chip uh, components on the bottom side. And the last one here, labeled CX, is a bit more complex with uh, both types of component technologies. But as you can see with the surface mount on both sides of the PCB, and you can see how some of the components need to be spaced. Uh, there's some spacing between them, well, especially when it comes through a hole and other surface mount components. Uh, so why do you have to strateg strategically decide early on what type of components you will choose for your design and how and where they will be placed? Uh, well, there are always trade-offs uh, with every decision, uh, but surface mounts are always recommended and for the following reasons. Uh, they have lower costs uh, when you compare them to their counterpart uh, through hole. Uh, they're pretty much a standard and they have been since the 90s widely available and which makes it also easier to find and easier to maintain. Uh, they're more compact and uh, their reduced size yields smaller and lighter boards which also helps you reduce your overall cost. And they provide a good opportunity for you to leverage automation in, automation in your assembly process. A few things to keep in mind uh, is due to their smaller size uh, they can be more susceptible to higher temperature and risk being damaged if temperature is not strictly controlled during the solder paste reflow. Uh, and because of that, the setup can be more complex and might require more time. And in turn, that might lead to higher costs at the end of the day uh, with surface mount. Uh, let's move to comp component placement and just a few notes. Uh, we recommend that all surface mount uh, components should always be placed on one side of the board. Uh, and if for whatever reason that's not 100% feasible, uh, components should be divided into light and, uh, and heavy and place them on different sides of the board. And as we can see in this image, uh, BGS, through hole, and any heat generator components all should be on the top side and you can place chip components on the opposite side as you can see depicted here in this image. And the next one we have here, if you have to put a BGA component on two sides of the board, it's never recommended to put them facing each other as you can see here, uh, as this setup makes it very difficult for extra inspection. So it's better to separate them as we see here. Uh, we always recommend that you uh, leave at least 5 millimeter between your BGAs and any passive component. And this becomes really critical and an issue if only a rework is needed uh, or what we call reballing uh, for the BGA. And the next image, uh, it's not recommended to place through whole components near BGAs as they often require different soldering temperatures. Uh, it's a uh, best practice to distribute your large components and BGAs uh, throughout your board. And, um, and this helps keeping your, your weight evenly distributed, so it prevents bending of your board. Imagine if you have a lot of weight in the middle of the board, what, uh, what might happen to your board? And that's what they refer to as uh, Boeing. Uh, along the same line, uh, always, keep, uh, always keep your large components, as you can see in the next image, and BGAs away from the board edges, as board edges have higher melting temperature than the middle of the board. And next image, uh, components should always be placed no closer than two millimeter from the board edge if you are using strip line technology, and at least four millimeter if you're not using the strip line technology. And uh, when possible, 
always try to use the same package size throughout your whole design. Uh, for example, for caps and resistors, if you elect an 805 uh, package, then try to use it throughout the whole board. Uh, keeping the same uh, size will definitely optimize your installation performance. And uh, it's not a good practice to have components that vary largely in their size placed near to each other. As you can see here in this image, this can create a thermal shadow from the larger component, which can affect soldering reliability of the smaller component, as you can see. Uh, in that area where that is shadowed, it could have a, a weak solder joint, which will uh, could lead to the component being completely coming off from the board. And uh, if you have any press uh, fit connectors, you should always keep a tool-free area on the terminal sides free of any other components or anything that might be on the way. Well, that's what we had for you today. Uh, if you found this episode helpful, uh, give us a like, share it, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe to our OnTrack channel. And thank you for watching.